Hey there everybody, how's it going today? So my name is PO17 or P017, whichever you prefer to call. And in this video that I wanted to make, it's kind of a follow-up video from the previous one that I made. So if you haven't watched my previous video, which is on the topic of CRT TVs versus CRT video monitors, and which one you should consider buying, please go ahead and watch that before watching this one. This video here is going to address a couple things that I forgot to talk about as well as one thing that I did talk about in the previous video, in the previous video, but didn't really go uh, in depth with. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, as you can clearly see in front of the camera here, I have the GameCube and I have GC HDMI, its interface on the screen. And why do I have that? Well, this first part is going to talk about 480i in particular. So what I have here loaded right now is my GameCube, and I'm going to be playing F-Zero GX pretty soon, both at 480i and 480p, to demonstrate you as to why video monitors tend to be very bad at 480i. Now this doesn't apply to every video monitor. I did mention in my previous video that video monitors just suck for 480i. Now, as a blanket statement, that's like half true. Some video monitors are actually okay with it. For example, my JVC video monitor, which I'll go ahead and get here shortly, there we go. So this is my JVC video monitor that I have right now. It is a 13-inch slot mask tube, so it is a shadow mask, but it is a slot mask as opposed to an aperture grill, such as this GVM, or a dot mask, such as my other JVC monitor. Now, why do I say this one's not necessarily as bad in 480i? Well, that's actually mainly due to the fact that I forgot to talk about scanline gap. So overall, when it comes to the image quality of these video monitors, it's very, very good in general for 240p. For 480i, it differs, but there, of course, are still differences between what video monitor you get. And I can get really into specifics, but the main thing is this. Typically speaking, a slot mask 480i monitor, or 240p monitor, will do uh, 480i content a bit better than typical aperture grills and whatnot, mainly due to the fact that your scanline gaps aren't necessarily going to be as prominent or as wide or thick, you could say. So, for example, this JVC is pretty thin gap, which means that when it does do interlacing for 480i content, it will actually blend the image a little bit better as opposed to this Sony, which blends it absolutely terribly. And I'll show you just in a little bit how that looks between 480i and also... 480p, which is something I forgot to talk about too with when it comes to video monitors. So let's get into that. Alright, so as you can see here, I'm getting F-Zero GX loaded, and I have just set the screen to interlace mode so that I can show off exactly how it looks at 480i. So, right off the bat, you can't really tell too well on the camera, but I can tell very well just on the screen that the interlacing is pretty noticeable and it's not all that great. Now, if you have a video monitor like the JVC that I talked about or a CRT TV, it's gonna be very much less prominent. However, let me go ahead and uh, zoom in and show you what I mean. So, as you can see just in general, there is noticeable interlacing and the video might capture it and make it a little bit worse than it seems. I'm not trying to, like, chill out and say this is so bad you should never use it or anything like that. But I'm just trying to show you a good example as to how interlacing looks in general at a 480i setup. And here, I'll go ahead and go to a uh, blank, or a standard, or non-moving screen. But yeah, overall, the flickering from the interlacing is pretty noticeable and can impact your performance, or not your performance, but just your overall experience, especially if you're using a larger video monitor. Now let's go ahead and switch over to 480p. Alright, so as you can see here, I'm actually going into progressive scan now, and as you can tell on the top of the screen, it does say uh, 480p and 60 FPS, or 60 hertz, my bad. And now, we have a much cleaner screen, and that's due to the fact that there's no more interlacing. So I'll get another close-up for you to show.
So as you can see, you know, a blue falcon here, he's looking pretty good. Same with the press start and pause button. Now without the interlacing effect that you have on screen, it's such a nice, be or a much better picture. Now when it comes to, uh, what is it? A CRT TV in terms of 480i content versus this at 480p, you might not notice too much of a difference. And you can see up close here what I mean. So yeah, there actually is very, 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 very minor scan lines in between here, which is actually kind of neat. And part of the reason is just due to the fact that this is actually considered a computer monitor. So this can push higher resolutions than just 480p, which is why it has that. But overall, you kind of get the idea of what it means to have a multi-format monitor. And the benefit overall of not needing to necessarily worry about interlacing with an SD resolution when you have HD instead. All right, so with that in mind, that was the main thing that I just wanted to go over was the uh, 480i to 480p part on the video monitor to try and demonstrate to you exactly why something like that is very prominent and very worth considering whenever you're looking at a CRT TV versus a video monitor. With a TV, typically speaking, 480i, it will still be a little bit softer of an image because it's not showing full detail per frame because what interlacing really is is it's just taking a frame cut in half and lacing each one, so like this, uh, at every alternating frame. So what you essentially get is 30 hertz on one part of the frame and 30 hertz on another that blend together and give you 60 hertz at 480i. Now, is this really a huge like thing to consider? Personally, it's a yes and no question. If you're all in for details, it is. But if you just want a half decent experience with a decent looking video monitor or a decent looking image in general, then it really isn't that much of a worry. It's just mainly me being picky. <laughs> but it is something to consider, uh, especially when you're looking at a TV, because maybe it might save you a lot of money. Because who knows, you might spend like $400, $500, $600 for something like this for a multi-format video monitor. Which, in this case, I actually needed some special equipment to even be able to run videos in through RGB to be able to get uh, 480p off of. Or something as simple as a CRT TV, which just has your standard inputs. You plug them in, you're good to go, don't have to worry about anything else. So this is primarily the main video that I wanted to talk about. Um couple other things that I did want to mention. So one of the things that I did forget to say about the difference between a video monitor and a CRT TV is actually the filtering abilities uh, that these TVs and video monitors have. So if you want some of the cleanest signals you can ever get, a video monitor is really good for that. Typically speaking, video monitors, because you want the best image quality you can get out of them, they will have much better shielded signals to be able to get rid of as much interference as possible when it comes to these sets. So you don't necessarily get any dot crawl going across the screen, especially on like composite. Also rainbowing, so for example on this CRT, this uh, is running right now through composite, but there is no rainbowing effect happening on the screen like what you would get on a TV for the most part. And that is due to the fact that this comb filter that's in it is really good. So that's another thing you do have to keep in mind, and that is that video monitors were very good about properly shielding their connections to be able to have a very good signal that didn't have very much, if not any, interference. So that was another thing that I had missed talking about as well, compared to a TV. Now, some TVs are really good about that as well, especially the high-end ones. And some did come with comb filters, uh, as they got a little bit newer and newer, so some video monitor technology did trickle down into these TVs. But these, t these two actually don't have comb filters on them. Uh, that JVC does, however. So <clears throat> do keep that in mind as well when you're looking at some TVs versus some video monitors. If you want less composite rainbowing, typically speaking, try to look for a TV that has a comb filter that's half decent. And the other thing, too, is also look for a Sega Genesis VA3 or 4, especially on a Model 2, because that'll also help eliminate composite rainbowing. Because the better your signal quality is for 
something on a system and the better your signal quality is on a video monitor or a TV, the better your image is going to look. So yeah, that's pretty much the main things I really wanted to go over. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And yeah, <laughs> watch the first video and then go back and watch this video. So I know this is kind of a bit long, but overall, I hope that it helps you in your journey for your next CRT. And if you do get a multi-format video monitor like this, do comment down below. Tell me what you think. Uh, if it's a PVM 14L5 or a 20L5, uh, do tell me kind of your experience on that because I have heard both positive and negative things about the 14L5 and 20L5. So I'm curious to hear what you think. And if you have a GVM 2020, I am interested. <laughs> Considering that this is a GVM 1311Q in front, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on the GVM 2020 as well. So thank you so much again, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.